Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to go about actually installing the force.com IDE within Eclipse. So once you open up Eclipse, all you have to do is just go to the Eclipse Marketplace, which is under the Help menu. You can click on the Eclipse Marketplace here, or you can view on the browser as well if you do not find the force.com IDE. You'd have to go to marketplace.eclipse.org and then search site and Salesforce. So this is the URL that you can actually navigate to. If I scroll down on this particular page, notice the search results that I'm searching for was the force.com IDE. IDE is the integrated development environment. And it brings me to this particular install. So all I have to do is just click on install and this is going to go ahead and bring up the Eclipse Marketplace dialog box and provide me with the option to install force.com and then a couple of additional options as well such as the debugger and the required IDE. So I'm going to go ahead and simply make sure all of these check boxes are checked and click confirm and this is going to go ahead and install the force.com IDE. And of course I have to accept the terms of the license and click finish. So on the bottom here notice the progress shows the installation of the actual software and once it's installed I should be able to connect to my Salesforce account and bring over all of the objects right so I can now use Eclipse as my main developer tool right so I can use code within the Apex programming language directly into Eclipse and there are several other advanced features or intermittent advanced features and functionality that Eclipse offers that the developer console which is the web browser based console that we looked at in the earlier lecture does not really cater to it so as a, as a developer right uh, once you get comfortable with writing code you want to be able to have an integrated development environment so which is helpful so I'm gonna wait till it actually installs the software and then I'll demonstrate how to actually go ahead and navigate to or use the force.com ID and once this installs it it asks because it needs to restart Eclipse for the changes to take effect so I'm gonna go ahead and click on restart and we'll come back once Eclipse is back so it is now restarting Eclipse I'm using Mars dot two and of course you can use other Eclipse versions as well perfect so once Eclipse is back it brings me to the default Eclipse environment here I'm gonna go ahead and open up a perspective right so within that perspective I'm gonna find the force.com IDE so in order to navigate to the perspective I'm gonna click on let's say window here and there's an option called perspective open perspective and I'm going to click on other this will bring up a dialog box and within this dialog box I'm going to find force.com and here it is right because we just installed it and restarted Eclipse so all I have to do is just select force.com click OK and this is going to open up the force.com perspective so once make sure I have selected the force.com perspective I'm going to navigate to the package explorer and the shortcut is of course right click click on new and notice it gives you several options regarding your Salesforce Apex and I can create an Apex class I can create an Apex class from WSDL or a custom object triggers and so on so I'm going to go ahead and first just quickly demonstrate how to create about a new project right so I'm gonna go ahead and click on force.com project or just project it brings up a new project dialog box I'm gonna navigate and find force.com should be here here it is just expand the folder select force.com project and notice I have several other folders right because I have all these perspectives because I teach hibernate I teach Java and so on so JBoss tools but if you don't have all of these in Eclipse that's okay because 
the reason you see all of these other folders is because I have all these tools installed. So here I'm going to make sure force.com project is selected, click next, and it asks for a name. I'm going to call it Claydesk, I'm going to call it eLearning. The username is the actual username for your Salesforce. So I'm going to go ahead and just type the username here. And then, of course, the password. We're going to leave the security token blank. The environment is production or developer edition. We are using the developer edition, which is fine. Let me move this up so you can actually see. Perfect. So we give it a project name, username, password, and of course, you have the option to do production, developer, or sandbox, pre-release, or others. So we're going to keep it as production, which is the default option here. So simply click next. It's going to go ahead and fetch all the package and all the objects. So let me go ahead and simply navigate to the actual browser, go to my Salesforce account and go to settings. Then I'm going to go ahead and reset the security token, right? So let's navigate to our browser. Here's my Salesforce. I'm going to navigate to my profile. And then notice right under my name here, it says settings. And that's where I have to go and then find the personal settings to reset the token. So right under personal information, it says reset my security token. So I'm going to go ahead and click on reset my security token here and then simply click on this button and this is going to send a new security token to the email address for your account. So of course I can fetch that from this particular email address to my Outlook and then insert that into Eclipse and see what happens. All right, so I have the security token here and what I've done is pasted it from my email to notepad so i'm just going to copy it at this point navigate back to eclipse click on abort for now and then enter the security token and then let's try to click next and see what happens and hopefully at this point it should authenticate and then provide me with the next set of screens and it's going to fetch all the packages and objects and place them directly onto my package explorer but at this point the next screen after successful authentication it says choose metadata components from your organization to include in this project so i can choose apex and visual force like classes triggers pages or i can select other metadata components as well so of course i like to integrate all of the apex and visual force triggers pages etc so click finish and here is going to actually fetch everything from and save to force.com components from my online to actual Eclipse IDE. And you will notice that within the left side, Package Explorer, I have Claydesk eLearning because this is the project that we just created in force.com. And a word of caution, make sure you're still in the force.com perspective, right? Since I have all sorts of other perspectives here, but in your case, since if it's a fresh installation of Eclipse, you may just have a couple of perspectives here. But just ensure that you're working in the force.com because if I click on Java perspective here, notice things will change, right? And similarly with other perspectives as well. Like Git is going to change the entire screen and so on. So I'm going to click on force.com, navigate to Claydesk eLearning Project. If I expand this, click on Source. I'll be able to actually navigate to classes, components, pages, and so on. I already have a page made on force.com or in my Salesforce. So you'll notice if I double click on this claydesk.page, it's going to open up that page for me and show me what I've done so far. So now at this point, I can currently use the Eclipse IDE and then create Apex classes and basically do all the programming directly in Eclipse IDE. So as a, as a developer, it's it's a good practice. I'd recommend using Eclipse IDE. Of course, it gives you more power and control, right? 
as you move along with your code. So practice with this. I hope this helps and let's move to the next lesson.